you join me today in the beautiful Louth at Hubbard Hills. So we're here today to catch some crayfish by hand. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through the different ways and different things that I use, different techniques, what I'm looking for and hopefully catch some crays on film. So what I'm here in right now is a chalk stream, so it's very clear, we've got a slight bit of flow on it, plenty of rocks on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see behind me, there's lots of erosion in the bank, it's usually a really good sign of craze. I'll show you that later on. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to get on the bank, I'm going to tie up some bait, some bags, show you the bits that I'm using, and then we'll get some bait in and uh, get us some craze. Right, so I just thought I'd quickly take you through a few little bits of kit that I've got with me today. Right, there's nothing complicated, nothing expensive, it's all just stuff that I've thrown together. The most expensive part of this whole kit was the bacon. So we'll start with that then, that's what I've got for my bait, some smoky bacon, raw, and then I've got some plastic netting. Now that has come off the chair legs of my partner's office chair, I think it was packing netting. Uh, it's plastic so it's really really strong. And then I've just got a nice shaped good weight rock from the bottom of the river so it matches the riverbed. With the shape, I'm looking for as rounded as possible so that there's no sharp edges for cutting my net. And it needs to be a good weight to hold that bait to the bottom because they will try and drag it away. Moving on, got a little bit of wool just for tying up my bags and for tying up claws. Because if you get any decent sized craze, you're going to want to tie the claws up because otherwise they end up crushing the other craze in your bucket. Uh, and then I've just got a very sophisticated, very highly technical piece of equipment right here. It's a coat hanger that I have straightened into. A hook, you, you can't see it but you might be able to see it, a uh, hook and then at this end <coughs> that is where you hang your coats and things but I actually found out that when you put that over a cray like, like so, so that goes over their back, they actually tangle themselves up in it so you can lift them out of water. It's also handy for hooking my bait out of the water, for hooking bits of debris out of the way if it's in my way and I can't see. Very handy tool and yeah it's just a coat hanger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how I tie this bag up, it's nothing complicated and then once that's done then we'll take you for a walk up and down river and uh, show you what I'm looking for. Right, so I'll just quickly take you through what I'm doing with the bag, it's nothing complicated so I'm taking a couple of bits of raw smoky bacon, um, I'm not going to lie to you this is a little bit disgusting because it's been in my fridge for a couple of days but to be fair if it's off it's better from all accounts and then all I'm doing Rolling it up. Like so. And what I've done is I've just rolled the bag backwards uh, just to make it easier to get the bacon in. So what I'm doing then is just stuffing that in, rolling the bag back round it, get a bit of a tug so it goes to the bottom, take the rock, in the rock goes, and then I'll just take some wool. Don't need much, and all I'm doing is just folding the end of it like that, taking my wall. Long end goes round a couple of times, and then tie it off with a tag. Now, just be careful that you don't do what I am always tempted to do, and use your mouth because you're handling raw bacon. And not only that, this is raw bacon that might have possibly gone off. So, <laughs> not tying with my mouth today. Job done. Pull off a bit of twine, or wool, or whatever you're using. I'm using black wool because it's really easy to see. And thankfully, my partner's very generous and has allowed me to pill for some. And there you have it, that's all it is bacon in a bag with a rock. So, now that's tied up. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to pan up a little bit. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a walk up and down this bank, have a look for some signs, now I'll take you with me and I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for in that bank and where I'm going to place my bait. Okay, so you join me in the river, in my waders. So, this little spot here is perfect. Now what we've got here is it for one, we've got an overhang, that's a big sign, there's my first bit of bait there, I actually used a banana skin which has caught me one, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then you're looking in the bank, you see all the holes in the bank and how it's overhung, 
that means Cray's have been digging that bank out. So what I'm going to do, we've got the flow coming this way, so I'm going to go a little bit further up, I'm going to drop one bait there, There's a, I can just see a rock there where it starts to get deeper, I'm going to put one bait in there, and I'm going to put one bait down here, and I'm going to use the flow to take that bait signals all the way down here, and hopefully attract something out. Right, so I've actually found a spot here where it gets a little bit deeper than usual. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pop one in here and just leave it for a while because given the depth it is there at the margin, the amount of hidey holes, I'm thinking if there's going to be a decent sized cray in this stretch, it's probably going to be in somewhere like that. So I'm going to pop that in there and we'll go from there. I'm just going to gently pop it in. Nice and easy and you can just see it there. Right, so I'm going to leave that there for a bit. I'm going to go tie up another bait and we'll get one in down there. Right, so the proof's in the pudding. As I said before, the first bait that I chucked in was actually a, a, an empty banana skin, based on something I, I saw online this morning. Apparently banana skins um, give off a substance that mimics the pheromones released by females when they're ready to mate. I didn't think it would work. I'm watching them fight over this banana skin. Bad size. But within 30 seconds of it being in water, there were three crays on it, and <laughs> success. Weirdly enough, this is a female, but I'm going to get a bit closer. I'm going to show you a few key elements of these guys and how to identify them properly. Right. So the first thing you're going to notice is obviously the red claws, marking it out as a signal crayfish. Now, the other surefire way to identify them, on this plate here, if it's a, if it's a native crayfish, the white, white claw cray, it'll have two little horns here, just behind its, uh, just behind its front, front its claw legs, I don't know what to call them. Um, so that's the easiest two ways to identify them. Now this one, this one's a female, and you can tell because on a male, they've got two extra swimmerettes, hold on, trying to bite me. Uh, it's got two extra swimmerettes or pleopods that go up here and they're quite enlarged but that one doesn't have any so this one's a female and there you have it the american signal crayfish invasive species very tasty yeah, that one's a little bit a little bit timid so I'm going to come away for a little while, let him build his confidence up, because that's a good size as that, so he's worth some effort. What I'll probably end up doing is laying down on my front on that bank there, and uh, trying to catch him that way. Right, so we've been here about, I don't know, about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. I've been trying lots of different spots, up and down, up and down the river bank, either side of the river bank, uh, and then just going between them and checking them, uh, and we've met with some success. So we've got a nice, nice little feed in there. Nothing massive. And then I was checking a bait up there and I stood in the water and I'm watching my bait and I just caught movement out of the corner of my eye and I looked down and what's waddling past my belly, not my belly, my boot, but boom shanker. This bad boy. Some right meat in them claws. Really good eating in there. So this one, I'm gonna come a bit closer. You see there, those two long 
swimmerettes that go up the middle there, that maximum is a male. And as you can see, it's smooth on the side of his thorax there. That makes him a definite signal crayfish. And it's a beaut. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good eating. Right, so what I'm going to take you through here uh, is just what I do when I catch one of a decent size. The claws about this size. I'm going to want to tie these claws off because otherwise when you put them in a bucket, um, the, what it'll do is it'll start crushing down on the other crays. And uh, I don't like that. I don't know if anybody else is bothered about that, but I don't like putting a claw in and finding there's a hole in it. So I like to tie off these claws. So what I'll do is I'll put my boot over his claw there. I'm not actually putting any pressure on it. I've just got my boot over it so he can't lift it up. And that means then that claw's isolated so I can do what, this, what I want with this claw now. Now, all I'll do, a bit of a twine. I'm going to let the crayfish help me. Watch this. Yeah, cut for that, mate. Come on, squeeze down. No, you're not having it. No, usually they'll squeeze down and hold it for you because they're really, they're, they're really considerate like that. And then you're going to go that way, round the opposite way. So what I've done is I've tied a little bit round the thin claw, pulled it tight, and then with the long end, I'm just going to go round and round, keep it tight. Once I've got round a few times, I'm going to nip it and nip it so it keeps it tight, and then I'm just going to tie it off. Bear in mind that if you let any slack in this, they will take it off. So you've got to make sure it's tight and that your knot hasn't slipped at all. It's a bit finicky, but believe me, it's worth it. And again, don't do what I want to do, which is use your mouth, because not only have you been handling raw bacon, you've also been handling raw craze. And while I'm sure it's harmless, you never know. I'm happy with that. There we go. I used a knife because the last time I tried to snap the wool off, I ended up cracking the claw, so I used a knife just to cut the wool now. Alright mate, let's get this one controlled as well. So now that one's tied up, he can't do out with that, so I can just do what I want now. Now, are you going to nip onto that for me? Thank you. Right, so I've got the little one tied up now. So I'm going to go around the opposite way with the long end. Just be careful when you're wrapping it round that you haven't put it on a point where, where it's curved, where it's curved like that, because if you do, your wool will slip and it'll obviously slacken off. Try and get it in a groove. There's plenty of little bobbles and stuff on the claws to grip a hold of the wool, but obviously they're going to be in the in the bucket, moving around, clawing onto each other, so better safe than sorry. Right. And there you have it. One controlled cray. I can put that now in my bucket with the other smaller crays and I know that he's not going to crush anybody. Job done. Look at that. I have never seen as many crays around my bait as there is right now. I've got one decent one in me and look, that one's for eating. Look at all of them. Loads of them. I couldn't find my bait at first and I couldn't I'm looking for it and I saw the string, there look, and I followed the string back up here and boom, there's literally just a clump of them. Now, as I've already got quite a few, I'm not going to take any of these because none of them are ever a decent size apart from this one. But I think what I'll do is I'll actually lift that bait up so you can see them all spook. Right, are you ready? Because well, they're feeding confidently, I could probably go in there and grab a couple and they won't even be bothered. Look at all them. Um, Look at them. Loads of them. They're all just chilling now, look. Mind me foot. Look at that one. No claws on it. Now I'm not taking it out of river, so I don't have to keep it. They're still fighting over a bit of meat. 
I'm still fighting over a little bit of meat that's been left over a lot. <laughs> so, after nearly three hours of searching, I've managed an okay bucket of small to medium craze, but I really wanted bigger. So I decided to go a little bit further upstream to where the river travels under a road and comes out in a really wild area on the other side, and spend the last hour searching here. And to say it was rough rambling to get there was an understatement, because I had to fight my way through armpit high nettles, but boy was it worth it. This was the average size for that area, and I managed a good bucket. So it's finally time to pack up, head home, and get my cook on. So join me in part two for my favourite part, the eating.